Raise your hand if you've ever been preoccupied. Raise your hand if you've ever been preoccupied. I want to raise both hands. I'm terribly at being preoccupied. If we had to look at this gospel passage um, of Matthew, which continues what is described in Scripture as the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching his followers how we are to be. And Jesus tells us not to worry and not to be preoccupied. So if I were to go up and down the aisle, which I'm not going to, but I'd like you to think about some of the things that preoccupy you, what things preoccupy myself. Like, think about that for a moment. Like, um, you know, human beings, as far as we know, are the only species that God made. That's what part of our being made in God's image and likeness that can be sitting right here. I'm standing, but you're sitting. And your mind be preoccupied with something else completely. Not that I have a bad homily, I hope, but it just happens, right? So we get preoccupied. So think about what preoccupies you, what might preoccupy me. So we're gonna be doing next, what our kids are gonna be doing, am I gonna make the schedule, what about breakfast, will I get there on time? You know, like it just goes on and on and on. But what Jesus is saying to us, especially in that first part of the gospel where he says you cannot serve two masters. You know, so who should be the most um, important person in our lives? Hopefully all of you are thinking, God, say God, Father Ron. God's the most important person in our lives and he should occupy our thoughts at all times. But instead what we do is we worry. We worry about this or that or preoccupy with all sorts of things. And Jesus is telling us to stop. Just take a moment and stop and stop worrying. Stop being preoccupied, but rather occupy your thoughts and your mind and your heart and your soul. Occupy that space that God has given to us and occupy that attention and turn it toward God. You cannot serve two masters, Jesus says. You will either love one and hate the other or admire one and despise the other. And the kind of service that Jesus is talking about, the word as it's translated from the original language of the scriptures is the kind of service that a slave would have toward their master the kind of complete surrender to the one who is in charge of us. And we know that we're not enslaved by anyone um, here in our beautiful land, but we can be enslaved by so many other things. And I think that as social media evolves, um, our preoccupation can even get even worse than it was before. And even in Jesus' day, he has a list that I'm sure resonated with the people of his time. Why are you worried about what you're going to eat or drink or wear or you're going to sleep? God will take care of you. Don't worry, but rather be present to God who is in our lives all the time. God will provide for the things that we need. And even as I say that out loud, you might be thinking to yourself like, but that's not true. How does God do that? I have to work hard to provide for my family. I have to work hard to make sure that there's food on the table and my kids have clothing. And I know that to be true. But still at the basis of all that we have and all that we are is our God in heaven who takes care of us. We can't take anything with us. The only thing that we have are our relationships. So as we love God, we love our neighbor, and loving our neighbor is a way that we love God, that complete um, dialogue that happens between God and our neighbor and God and ourselves. So stop being preoccupied, Jesus says. Don't worry. God will provide. This past fall, I had the blessing to go to Mother Teresa 
um, now St. Teresa of Calcutta's um, canonization. So while I was in Rome, I purchased a book about some of Mother Teresa's sayings, and it's um, in sections. So um, I was reflecting on, um, every day I would just read a little bit about um, silence. So she, she has this whole section about being quiet, which I need a lot. It's sort of the opposite of preoccupation. So one of the advice she gives to her sisters, or gave to her sisters who entered the convent, um, the Sisters of Charity, her religious community, is she encouraged them, um, not about, sometimes we think about silence as just silencing our head, but she also talked it about silencing our lips, silencing our eyes. She talks about that like, do we judge? Like, is that where our preoccupation comes? What about our ears? Do we need to silence our ears? Do we need to kind of put on a filter and someone's getting negative over here and we just need to walk away? What about our lips? Is that what we need to silence so that we're not so preoccupied um, with the life that is around us that wants to pull us away from the life of God? What about our cell phones? I just came back from vacation, so um, I don't carry my cell phone while I'm on vacation. I'll, um, I'll check, you know, check it um, a couple times during the day, but I don't want the alerts. And then if I post something on Facebook, is someone looking or watching or following or liking or, you know, like that whole thing that can preoccupy us from just being still. Silence. Mother Teresa says, in order to pray, we first need to be silent. And it takes a tremendous amount of effort to do so. Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. You'll either love one or hate the other or appreciate one and despise the other. God needs to be the most important person in our lives. And we need to give that relationship our attention. And when we try to, our minds are built in a way that they can be preoccupied. Lent is going to start here soon, in a few days. I really want to encourage all of us assembled here today to really to try to pray by being silent. Pray by being silent. Even if it's just for a few seconds, maybe one day, and then maybe it's 10, a whole minute or 10 minutes. Try to be silent. And when your mind wanders off and perhaps worries about the cares of the day, what Mother Teresa and many other spiritual writers invites us to do is just bring itself back and say, God, I know you're going to take care of that. I place my trust in you being present to the moment and what God has in store for us right now is where God is. God is always present. There is no past or future for God. God just is. He is present here in his word. He's present here in his son who will celebrate at this table. We will eat and drink his body and blood so we can take it out into the world with us, and we need to be present to God's presence in our lives. So don't worry, Jesus says. Don't be afraid, he says in other places on the Sermon of the Mount. And certainly don't let your mind be preoccupied with so much clutter. You cannot serve two masters. The only master that we have is God. So may our lives, our minds, our hearts, our souls be occupied with the one who gives us eternal life. God who is present to us, whose kingdom has come, whose will be done on earth as it is in heaven.